This is Robert from Merit Webb, and this is um, Quick Test Education video number six. Today we're just going to look over some general uh, concepts related to anxiety. And this is the document that you can get when you click on this link uh, definition state versus trait anxiety. It's, un it's important for you to be able to differentiate sometimes between state anxiety and trait anxiety uh, with a client. Otherwise, you might get really frustrated. So let's look at the definition of anxiety itself. Uh, an acute or unpleasant emotion associated with arousal of the autonomic nervous system um, due to a perceived threat or some sort of danger. Um, it's almost always associated with, with fear or um, buried fear, fear that the person can't really recognize, especially in the case of trait anxiety. Increase in blood pressure, heart rate, muscle tension, sweating, rapid breathing, all that kind of stuff. Just imagine being afraid. Imagine being backed into a corner by a barking dog that, that you think is going to bite you. Think of all the things that would happen to you physically because of that. Um, there are some DSM disorders that might be associated with anxiety, including panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, Specific phobias, agoraphobia, uh, stuff like that. Let's look at the difference between state anxiety and trait anxiety. State anxiety is a temporary emotional state that nearly everyone experiences at times, especially with a back in the corner by a dog or, um, you know, they, they're fearing something. Uh, it's normal to feel that. Trait anxiety is really recognized by the same factors but at the same time it's a more consistent personality attribute and uh, with a person who's got trait anxiety there's going to be some kind of anxiety there most of the time even in cases where there's not uh, an overt uh, threat there is no dog barking they're going to find a fear. They're going to find a threat. They're going to find some some sort of danger in in things. There, there are people who have trade anxiety that when the when the telephone rings, they have many panic attacks because they know it's bad news. They perceive the ringing of the telephone as some sort of danger, some sort of threat, some sort of a reason to arouse fear. Um, a person with state anxiety situations normally just do that. Uh, that would be a, a trait anxiety thing. Always revved up, always ready to, to launch off into, uh, into a panic. So state anxiety is not really something that, that needs um, long-term treatment unless there's a long-term threat. person uh, has an illness. Um, someone else is ill in the family, um, job loss that, that extends for some period of time and doesn't seem like it's going to go away. Those kind of things uh, will cause state anxiety over a long period of time. But if there is no threat, no real threat, state anxiety will go away, or no real prolonged threat, then state anxiety will go away when whatever the, the fearful incident is. Um, let's see here. Uh, again, when the object or situation that is perceived as threatening goes away, state anxiety diminishes and the autonomic nervous system returns to homeostasis. Not usually needing um, intensive treatment. On the other hand, let's look at trait anxiety. Trait anxiety seems to be a built-in component of the personality. And uh, 
you're going to find some of the same traits, most of the same traits um, that are associated with state anxiety are also associated with trait anxiety. However, um, they're going to arise more rapidly in trait anxiety. They may arise for reasons like the telephone ringing, where as in state anxiety that doesn't really happen. Um, there are going to be many more perceived threats and dangers with a person who has trait anxiety than a person who has state anxiety. And the reason you need to be able to differentiate between these two is because you might be trying to alleviate what you think is state anxiety. It's not really state anxiety. It's trait anxiety. And the anxiety is just not going away. Well, you're going to have to go after more intensive therapy than ther therapeutic techniques um, to break down the trait anxiety, including getting at uh, whatever the person believes is is harming them or going to harm them. You've got to uncover those things and find out that they are, in fact, unreasonable beliefs. Um, some things that a person who is experiencing trait anxiety might do, they might pace, they can't talk about intense things without pacing, uh, nervous body movements, twitching of the legs, the, uh, playing with the fingers, um, those those kind of things. Uh, if they're standing, they might rock back and forth. Nail biting, excessive, unreasonable worry, and other nervous physical manifestations. Uh, this is a persistent personality factor. You're probably going to want to use the, the PSA to find out what's really going on there and probably home of origins. My guess is that extreme trade anxiety goes back that far. Um, with state anxiety there's also there's always a, a real and perceived threat i'm afraid of dog biting me trait anxiety uh the environment itself can be the enemy and threats are not necessarily we real or present um my mom's been gone for a long time uh, i hope she hasn't been in an accident and then as a little more time goes on i know she's been in an accident and then the telephone rings and there's a mini panic attack because you know that's the police saying mom has been killed in a car accident. Um, these are the traits that go into trait anxiety that are not just part of the anxiety uh, symptoms. They're, they're the thinking, the defective thinking processes that create the unnecessary anxiety. Now, as, as this continues, um, a person will go off the edge and, and have panic disorder, panic attacks, panic disorder, uh, or generalized anxiety disorder where they're just anxious all the time. I always have a knot in their, in their stomach. Uh, these are the 15 items that are on the um, quick test uh, anxiety scale. And... I have put an asterisk by some that I think might be considered um, more toward trade, trade anxiety, although, uh, you know, as you notice right here, it says although they're not pure trait anxiety items. We don't measure uh, trait anxiety or state anxiety. We're measuring anxiety factors here. Uh, the Determining whether or not it's state or trait anxiety is going to be um, a matter of looking at uh, the real threat, the perceived threat. What, what is the threat? Sometimes with trait anxiety, uh, you ask a person, what are you afraid of? They, they don't know. Why? You know, I've, I've done it in counseling. Well, why is your leg moving? Why are you twitching your foot the whole time we're talking? That that is that is anxiety. What are you anxious about? Well, I don't know. I didn't realize that I was anxious. Well, those kind of emotions are uh, anxiety indicators. And if a person can't tell you, it's buried real deep. You got to use the PSA. You got to use um, Home of Origins and see if you can go after 
where that threat is buried. What, what is what is the threat that they're experiencing? So we're going to close this up for now. This is the end of the fifth um, educational video. We'll be up with another one in a little bit.